would you say uh, are the main challenges facing an HTML5 developer today? By far and away, right now, the biggest problem that we're seeing is performance. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear about it all the time, HTML5 slow, or web apps are slow, or JavaScript slow. And it's a tricky conversation because slow compared to what is, is the first question you have to ask. Right. If we're not benchmarking, then we don't know. Is right. it too slow to do your job? Probably not. And we're finding that while JavaScript is arguably definitely always going to be slower than the native equivalents, um, there's a lot of exciting technology coming out slowly, but soon to allow more parallelism, to allow uh, code to be compiled using things like ASM.js to get native speeds. And we're not seeing any problems there, but we are seeing problems with the DOM. Mm -hmm. and the, do the document object model is, is what is the guts of, of an HTML page. And when you manipulate that DOM, you cause what's called a layout or a reflow. When you reflow the content, you can get jank. And jank is the, it's in the dictionary. I actually looked this up a little while ago. <laughs> right. like, people are saying janky all the time. And I'm like, is that even a word? Like, so it is, anyways. Um, so <laughs> you, you see this jankiness, and, and it's, it's from the DOM. It's from interacting and touching the DOM. Because what happens when you, when you interact with the doc, document object model, you have to repaint this whole page. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where we typically will see the browser will lock up because it's single threaded. User interaction um, you know, is then blocked, and it, it feels janky. Right. So we're doing a lot of studying and thinking about how we can fix this. And it's a lot more about practices and um, education than it is about actual problems with the web browser itself. Most of these cases, uh, we can find that just writing good CSS is a part of the problem. Um, and teaching developers how to write good CSS is something that we're trying to address in a new project at Adobe called Topcoat. I think the one of the big performance challenges for HTML5 isn't that my app is slow. It's my app is slow, and I don't know why. Yeah. And, it, and it turns out that being able to help developers figure out what it is they've done that has, is slowing things down is probably the biggest area for improvement that I see. So instrumentation. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are also developers that are doing things uh, by hand, yeah. uh, coding to the spec, when they actually ought to be using a library that mm -hmm. has basically solved all these problems for them. That's really the key to productivity. The big benefit of a library, especially an open source one, is they get battle tested. And they get right. uh, exposure to all these weird Android phones that nobody has, except for people in China, right. apparently. Mm. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the least appreciated aspects of what's happening with HTML5 and JavaScript is the interaction with open source to create mm. these tools and libraries that increase the productivity of the community at large. Yep. And so it doesn't matter if there are differences between IE and Chrome and Firefox if you're using a library like jQuery or something like Topcoat where you know professionals are burning the midnight oil to make yeah. sure that all those things are tested uh, on all the devices. And so as a developer, you just use one of those and you know the problem of uh, cross-platform uh, compatibility and performance is essentially solved for you. We're seeing a new collaborative browser war where everyone's working together in the HTML5 spec and other specs of W3C to create a compatible surface. There's one part of that surface that isn't compatible, and that's DevTools. And so if you shift between Chrome and Firefox and IE, you have completely developer tool specific experiences. And so the interesting thing to me is a lot of these dev tools are building up around kind of classical software ideas. So we've got ideas around performance. Oh, I want to get into benchmarking mode. I'm going to do some performance analysis. So I'll put on my performance hat. That's what a game developer would do. He'd build the app really quickly, and then they'd be like, oh, God, this thing is slow. Let's, let's do some benchmarking and optimize speed this it. thing up and optimize it. Web developers don't do that. They, they just ignore that part of the problem. Web developers are like, I'm building an app. This looks pretty sweet on my browser. Deploy. And we need to find a way to get these tools to work together to standardize so that we can have a consistent surface for the development experience as well as the display experience. And we also need to think about how developers work. Web developers don't put on their performance optimizing hat because they may or may not know that they even do that as a part of their job.